Hello, I'd like to do an example uh, where I'm trying to find some, some uh, market efficiency uh, numbers and outcomes and I've been given a uh, table here with a, uh, a demand schedule and a supply schedule and I want to know what is the equilibrium or market clearing price. Okay, I don't know what that is. I want to know what the consumer surplus is. In other words, how good is this market for consumers? I want to know the producer surplus, how good is this market for producers. And then at the end I want to know some things uh, about changing the price. So for example if, if there's some kind of intervention. Now you may be given a, a function to figure all this out and that's great. You can figure it out algebraically. In this case I don't I don't have those. I can figure it out, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna graph this and uh, should help me there. So on my y-axis I've got price. I like to put a zero right here, kind of helps think about that. This is quantity over here. It's good to title your uh, your graph. We'll call this the widget market. Okay, and so I'll uh, I'll go ahead and graph these. And let's see if I can make that a little bigger. Okay. Okay. So for the the demand, we'll do that one in red. And at uh, price of one ten. Oops, I didn't uh, number my number all this here so this is 10 20 30 40 oops 50 60 70 80 90 100 120 and I think that's as high as it goes so that's fine and then on the quantity side 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80, 90, 100, I don't think we go any further than that. Okay, so we're back to uh, go ahead and graph the demand schedule here. So at 110, we have 10. At 100, we have 20. I'm just plotting these points over here. I'll, I'll ignore that for a second. So at 90, I got 30. At 80, I got 40. 70, 50. So this is a nice linear demand function here. Okay, and I want to actually look at this. Ooh, I have to have my wonderful there. Okay. So we're going to label that as the demand, and now let's do supply here. I'll do it in blue like my alma mater here, so I'll make a bigger size here. So now on the supply side, um, start down here, 40 is 10, um, 20, also pretty linear here. I don't think we go all the way to 100, do we? Yeah, we do. Okay. Okay. Sorry, it looked a little weird to me. There we go. So now I've got supply and demand always label everything. Okay, so now I can get to the equilibrium price um, and the way to do that is just to look and see where uh, supply meets demand. Um, above here, all of these quantities which are represented over here, um, there's going to be more quantity supplied than quantity demanded. So up here, it's important to think about there's a surplus, there's too much uh, goods and down here if the firm cuts their price there's not enough there's more quantity demanded than quantity supplied so we're just going to go right where they meet because that's going to be uh, some kind of long run equilibrium and just draw a line over to where uh, it's there and it looks like right around 75 so uh, so 75 is our equilibrium price we know that okay 
crappy. Okay, so consumer surplus is the area below the demand curve but above the price. In other words, um, this these demand these points on the demand curve represent what a consumer is willing to pay. Right, so it's the most they're willing to pay. It's the term for that is reservation price. That's the highest that they're willing to pay. So the way to do that is we just find the area of this triangle here. This is the consumer surplus, and so the um, the formula for that is one half base times height. It's just a triangle uh, that we get here. So it is one half, and then so we're going to go from 75 up to 110. Um, is that 45? Let me make sure because I don't want to have a wrong answer. So 10 minus 75, and it's uh, 35. And then we're going to go from 10 out to the quantity at equilibrium here is important too. It's, it's going to be right about 45. So it uh, looks like 35 times 35. The, the where I got that from is the distance between 10 and 45 is 35, and the distance between 75 and 110 is also 35. So uh, I get 35 times 35, and I don't know what that is. So, so 35 times... 35 is that times 0 0.5. It is 612.5. Okay. 612. Okay, now it isn't always the case that the producer surplus, which is the area above the supply curve, below the price is going to be the same but I'm already looking at it it's going to be the same so that's the producer surplus so we know it's going to be the same so I don't need to do the math again um, if the units were different or if the supply curve was maybe you know something more look like that then we would have a different curve but it doesn't so I'm not going to do that then I'm, I want to add those together and it's going to be the combined surplus is 1225 okay so this is what's going on in equilibrium. Well, uh, we care about this because sometimes the government might step in and, and, uh, and change something, right? So I guess I don't need to erase that. So let's say that uh, the government comes in and says that that price of 75 is, is not fair to poor people uh, and they want to uh, lower the price, we'll say down to, down to 60, right? So the, there's now going to be a price ceiling. It can't price can't go any higher than 60. So 60 is going to be the new price ceiling. We'll just follow this over here. Now this puts our market out of equilibrium. And what it means is that we're going to have less quantity supplied and more quantity demanded. Okay, um, we're only going to have this amount here. So um, so there's going to still be a consumer surplus. Um, and there's still going to be a producer surplus, so we can actually see where how what how the market has been affected. So, for the producers here, it's going to be this little box here. So this is after price ceiling of sixty dollars. Okay, so that's our new price, and we want to see how how much the market has been affected. Okay, this is known as dead weight loss, um, but we can just take the new so actually you can do a couple ways you can just calculate this that'll give you the dead weight loss this triangle here um, but I want to see what the what the producer or you can take the producer surplus and then subtract from the old producer surplus and that's the loss and efficiency from this program so let's do um, the new producer surplus okay is going to be one half and so now we're going from 40 up to 60, so that's 20 times uh, 10 over to 30, which is 20 again. So 20 times 20 is 400, and then half of 400 is 200. So, so now for the producers, their surplus is now only 200. Um, we can see how much they lost. They lost just over 400, about $412.50. 
So this was pretty costly to uh, the producers in this market. Let's see what happened to the consumers in this market. Now they're a little different. They're going to be um, so this area is gone, okay? But the the consumers now are going to capture all of this. You okay, probably should use a different. Well, we use a, like a purpley here. So this is the consumer surplus. So they may actually come out ahead here. Let's see. So consumer surplus again is one half. Well, it's going to be a couple of things actually. So it's this rectangle here, and then this triangle. So the rectangle is going to be 60 up to 90. Uh, so that's 30, and then uh, 10 over there is 20. So that turns into 600. Okay, so 600 is the calculation of this triangle, or rather, uh, rectangle right here. That's this, it's this guy. The consumers are going to get that. And the consumer is also going to get this. So we need to add that to the rectangle. So uh, that is 20 and then 20. So we actually already calculated that one. It's uh, 400 and then half of that. So it's 200. So for the consumer surplus, it's 800. So what we can conclude from this, uh, this price ceiling where the government knocked the price down from its equilibrium, down this was costly to uh, the producers. The consumers actually come out ahead. They went from a surplus of 612 and a half or 12.50 cents uh, all the way to 800. So the consumer surplus ate up some of the producer surplus uh, and you can see that graphically there.